impressed with the sound. The display looks good. How's the battery life going to be? What am I going to miss on the Android side? And most importantly, should anyone be spending $1,100 on a smartphone in 2018? That's should anybody be spending $1,100 or more, potentially $1,500 or more on a smartphone in 2018? Well, ultimately there's only one person that can answer that question, but uh, I want to bring to light a, um, I want to offer up a new perspective on this debate. Uh, this has been one of the most controversial um, iPhone launches I've ever, ever witnessed in my life. And for good reason. Um, usually anything that's controversial is, is good because it's, it's different and it makes people think. Um, but there's a lot of drama over this and I want to, uh, I want to just get you thinking about, um, this whole argument. Okay. So, uh, let's dive right in and I'm going to start by changing the subject completely. Okay. So these are multi-tools. Okay. This is a Gerber MP 600 multi-tool and this is a Leatherman Surge. Okay. I'm I'm starting this argument out with these com seemingly unrelated devices. Because, by the way, I'm filming this on an iPhone XS Max. So uh, let's let's jump in. Okay, so these are multi tools. This multi tool costs near a hundred dollars. This multi tool you c you can find them for twenty five dollars new on different websites potentially or. Like me, I bought, I had an old one that I had been using for years, and then I bought another one off of eBay because I liked the blunt nose versus the needle nose, and so I changed out the plier heads, and I made my own cool color pattern, right? So this can represent Android, this can represent iPhone. This is a premium product. It is a premium experience in this industry, okay? So, I use both of these on a regular basis, but I use this one far more. Why? Because the particular design and the set of features that it offers me as a complete package, uh, for me in particular, it's far more useful than this one right here. Why do I use this one? Well, for one, look at me open the thing, okay? I gotta open and close it, it's clunky. You know, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta fold it. This one, it's just in, out, right? Real quick, I can snap my wrist and they come out. And you have instant access to the pliers, but what if you want a knife? Well, if you want a knife, you gotta open it up, you gotta dig inside, where's the knife? That's, that, okay, I don't want that knife, I want this knife. Yeah, there's the knife, I gotta open this up. Oh, I don't want the pliers out now that I'm using the knife, let me put those back away, now I have a knife. Okay, that's rather tedious. Okay, so let's contrast that with this Leatherman Surge, okay? Look at the outside of it. It's got knives readily available and nice knives at that. This is a premium knife for something like a multi-tool, okay? So let me, tr let me change the subject yet again. This is a, this is a drill. Okay, this is a Festool CXS, lithium ion drill driver, okay? You're like, dude, why are you, like, get to the point here. Why, why are you comparing all these things to an iPhone or an Android? Okay, here's the thing. These, these products, they offer an experience when you consider them as a total package, okay? You just saw me change out this for... For this okay this is a right angle attachment this drill costs two hundred and fifty dollars I can go down to Home Depot and get a Ryobi drill for a hundred dollars and it's gonna be able to do more than this as far as power raw power but that's not the point this 
this is an expensive tool for a reason, okay? It's got some convenience factors up here, but then also, um, most of you are, aren't woodworkers, I would imagine, but if you're using a tool of the trade, there are things that are gonna be important to you, okay? The detail in the trigger, I can go very, very slow and still maintain ridiculous amounts of torque here. I can't stop that with my bare hands. Some cheap drills, they don't have that kind of precision with a trigger, okay? So, let's get back to the point at hand. Uh, smartphones. So, what is, a, what is a smartphone if not a digital multi-tool of sorts, okay? So, hold on. You are either going to care about the complete experience of a device like an iPhone or a smartphone or whatever phone you use. You're either gonna care about the complete package or you're gonna look at it as a bare essential tool, okay? And let's explain. There are plenty of people, there are probably hundreds of thousands of people that use drills and drivers on a daily basis. They need it to do one thing. They need it to take a screw and put it in to whatever medium they're driving that screw into, be it wood, metal, whatever, okay? As long as it does that, they don't care. But there are also a bunch of tradesmen and people that are doing a job that requires more precision, okay? I'm not saying the iPhone is a higher caliber tool than its competitors uh, within, a certain, uh, to, within a certain extent. Um, obviously, Apple is known for impeccable build quality, but here's the deal. Everyone keeps saying, I can go get the Pocophone for a fraction of the cost of the iPhone XS Max. Apple's ripping you off. They have a slow charger in the box. Blah, blah, blah. Apple's so cheap. They're ripping you off. Apple customers are stupid sheep that can't think for themselves because they don't know any better. Let me tell you something. I'm here to, I'm here to say that I know full good and well what specs represent on a sheet of paper. I'm absolutely capable of understanding that the Note 9 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. What does that mean? If I, if I sell you a car that gets 50 miles per gallon, okay? It gets 50 miles per gallon, but the gas tank is a certain size such that it only allows you to go 100 miles then what good is that car getting 50 miles per gallon? Or what good is that car having a 50 gallon gas tank if it gets such low MPG that again, you can't go but 100 miles on a tank of gas? What you're really concerned about is the range, okay? Huh. It matters not what the specs are on paper. Instead, what is most important is your actual usage in your experience. One thing that a lot of trolls, Android trolls, as I, I will call them, there are a lot of people that use Androids and they're huge Android fans and they appreciate what an iPhone has to offer. But there are also a lot of Android users who troll Apple users because they think they're dumb sheep. And I'd like to counter that argument because one thing they're not considering are all the small little details that iOS has as an operating system that make the user experience, in my opinion, a way more polished experience than anything that I've seen on Android. I've had Android phones. In your defense, the last Android phone that I've had was a Galaxy S4. Okay, that's, a, that's been several years ago. However, I consider myself pretty tech savvy. I regularly watch YouTube videos on the latest and greatest that Android has to offer. I've looked at the Note 9, I've seen all of its features, I've looked at all the specs, but none of these phones have a soul to me. And what I mean by that is I can pick up someone's, someone's Android phone and yes, it has, it has characteristics and it, it's set up to, uh, to their standards, to what they like, but there's no, there's no like uh, continuity in, in, in how the device functions. Okay, so there's one feature in particular that I'll use as an example that every iPhone and iPad has had since I can remember. And 
someone handed me their S9 recently or their S8, whatever it was, and I tried to do this and it would not happen. And I was just, just like deeply disturbed. And that's quick scroll to the top. If I'm on a web page or any kind of scrolling list and I want to quickly get back to the top of the, of the browser, all I have to do is tap the status bar and you're instantly just flung to the top, okay? So I, I might be speaking from ignorance. There might be some Android phones that have this feature built in or maybe this particular phone just wasn't in the app that I was in, maybe it wasn't working. But however, um, I remember when I had my S4, that was not the case, okay? I don't have to think about it on an iPhone, it's just boom. I know that's a really, really, really small detail. However, the camera, in my experience, has always been more reliable. The software has stayed the same as far as user interface goes for years and years and years. It's one of the most reliable camera software. I understand that there are better cameras out there. I'm not talking about the hardware. I'm talking about, again, the total package. You're not paying $1,100 or $1,000 or $1,500 or whatever you're spending on the iPhone. You're not paying that for the spec list, okay? You're paying that for the total user experience. And the people who are big iPhone fans, even if they're not tech savvy, they understand this for the most part. Sure, there are people out there that just, they ignorantly think that Apple's the best and they have to have the greatest and latest. But in my opinion, if you're buying an Apple iPhone for that reason, you're doing it wrong, okay? There are a lot of things that Android has to offer, but um, it's not, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a matter of Apple. There is no, there is no conspiracy theory here about Apple being an evil uh, corporation that's ripping people off. Um, everyone's like, oh, the iPhone XS Max and the XS are completely different. I mean, uh, are, are not different at all. They're entirely the same. It's a ripoff. Okay, well, you can look at that, and on paper, they'd look the same, okay? But in, in actual real-world usage, if you care about all these little details, you notice the difference, and maybe that's not important to you. Well, then you need to go get the XR. Oh, but the, the screen is 720p. Okay, well, 720p sounds bad, but maybe go look at it. See what your eyes think about it. I kind of agree. That's kind of low. That's why I didn't get the XR because I noticed these small little details, okay? No one is making people buy these phones and Apple's not stealing people's money. They, everyone that is a consumer has a free will and they can buy whatever they want to. And if they're lured into Apple's marketing without being a confident consumer and saying, I want this user experience, I'm going to buy this platform, if they're just like, oh, that's shiny, latest and greatest, then fine, they're ignorant, fine, whatever. But there's a lot of us out there who don't feel that way. We buy with confidence because we know what we want. No different than people who buy fine exotic cars. For example, if you care about the drive of a vehicle, I drive a Honda Pilot, okay? It's a great car. I, I, like to think I care about the drive, but I can't afford a Porsche. I can't afford a Lamborghini. I can't afford, you know, uh, any kind of a exotic car like that. But there are people who can and they do and they buy those cars because why? They care about the whole experience. Some would argue that it's useless to buy certain BMW cars because they cost way more than the comparable Tesla and the Tesla far outperforms and out accelerates a BMW. Maybe people don't want a Tesla. Maybe people don't want a BMW. Maybe they want the Tesla. I'm just saying, smartphones have a, such a, a, a controversial uh, following of people being like, you're getting ripped off. No one pays that much for a phone. No one should be paying that much for a phone. Well, in my opinion, Tim Cook is absolutely right. Very few people go out and drop $1,500 cash or $1,000 cash on a brand new iPhone when it comes out. These people, they pay up front, a down payment maybe, um, maybe they don't, maybe they get zero down, but they pay monthly. So what these people are actually considering is, is 
is it worth a dollar per day or however much for me to use this phone? And most people, when it gets broken down like that, yes, okay? You're using something all day, every day. And what's important to you is, is important to you and it might not be important to somebody else. So should anyone spend a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on a smartphone in 2018 well I would say I don't know should you is that important to you uh, nobody can answer that but you and if you arrive at the conclusion of no it's not worth it then don't do it but don't think for one second that there's not someone out there who can appreciate the fine little details that are attributed to the entire whole picture of the user experience. When it comes to smartphones, user experience is everything. Uh, one more little detail before I end the video because it's getting long-winded is the inertia of the scrolling. That S9 that I recently used when I was scrolling through that list and I couldn't get back to the top of the page without scrolling, I also noticed that there was no exponential scrolling momentum. So on an iPhone, say if you say you have like 12,000 photos in iCloud like I do, you're scrolling through those photos, or you're on a really long Safari web page and you're scrolling. When you scroll, even if you're just like flick, 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 it adds a little bit more momentum, a little bit more momentum, a little bit more momentum, and it multiplies over time. So eventually you're scrolling like blisteringly fast. On this device, you didn't get that. It was just, it felt soulless. And people who are big fans of iPhone understand exactly what I'm saying. There are small little minutia detail everywhere that come together that weave a fabric of the entire user experience. That's what you're paying for. And that's what people are forgetting to talk about when they say, look at these specs. Look at how crappy this is on paper. You could go get a phone that costs half as much and has better specs. What's wrong with you, you stupid Apple sheep? Okay, I hear people say that all the time, but I very, very rarely hear people bring in the details. The iOS has a characteristic to it. It is, they used to call it gamification. Uh, the physical interaction of all these digital elements, the way that, that the scrolling feels, the way that this feels, okay? So what if people care about that? You know, what does it matter? Um, so just think about that before you call someone um, a mindless sheep consumer because they're more detail-oriented than you. That's all.